Hey everybody, welcome back. Jesse here for 3 Prong Gaming. And in today's episode, we are going to continue working on our behavior tree here. We're going to try to get all of our construction uh, tasks set up for construction workers. Um, so let's go ahead and get this thing started. Last episode, we set it up so we can uh, got a little unemployment task going on right here. So if our NPC is unemployed, he's just going to wander the world and uh, move around in there. And we set up a little service right here. So yeah, hopefully today we're going to get most all this done. Um, again, we're not going to be able to test it. We might be able to squeeze it in if we really wanted to. Um, but seeing as we haven't really tested anything we've done in the last several episodes, um, we may have some bugs, even though I know the functionality works in my lead project. Um, as I mentioned an episode or two ago, um, I'm ch I've changed this up quite a bit. I I've changed uh, just enough that I could have introduced some bugs. Um, so yeah, we may end up having either the next episode will be either a really short episode and everything goes good or um, Yeah, we have bugs and we'll work through that because you guys haven't seen how I debug yet. So um, Yeah, it might be a decent episode for that. So and Let's get this going first. I want to apologize. There's some sort of construction going on behind my house and behind a couple houses and it literally just started doing it like a couple minutes before I started recording. So uh, yeah, not much I could do about that. Hopefully I can filter out most of that noise, um, get most of it out in my post-processing. Um, but if not, I apologize. Uh, yeah, we'll do what we can. All right. So first, uh, what I want to do, uh, I always rewatch my episodes, both obviously when I um, produce it, when I edit it and all that, but uh, then I watch it again after I upload it and uh, just to check to see if there's things that I did that were mistakes. And there were a couple that I did in the last one that I kind of want to fix right here. Um, first, simple, the simple one would be this random move to location. That's misleading because it's not a move to location. This is the move to location right here. What this does is this gets a random location. So let's change a few things here. Go ahead and open that up. Um, of course, you don't have to do any of this if you really don't want to. Um, but I am going to here. So node name, I'm going to put get random location. All right. Compile that and then save it and then come back out here. It's not going to change this yet, but if we select it, it's changed right here. So just uh, select it and press enter and it will change it for us. Compile and save it. Now, the name of the task is still random move to location. So let's jump back out here into the content browser. Blueprints, AI and find a random move to location. It's that one right there. So go ahead and select that. And I'm going to get random, uh, delete, 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 location. All right, so there we go. T, get random location. That's now the name of the task. Cool, that's all I wanted to do for that one. So let's go ahead and close that out, okay? And the other thing I wanna do here is, I, Jump into the random to uh, move to locate, or not the random, the actual move to location here. And what I want to do is actually, let's go ahead and get rid of this sequence node. Okay. Drag this switch back. We're going to hook this switch up. This is going to be the first thing after the casting. And uh, for the office, let's just take this. We only want to run this if it's actually, if we're actually selecting office right here. Otherwise, there's no need to really run any of that information right there yeah so uh, off the is val let's go ahead i'm going to move this up out of the way just a little bit here like this if this is not valid we need to pull off this and just do a finish execute we want this to fail all right so if we select office and for whatever reason our place of employment is not a valid object. We don't want to continue with this AI move because, well, we're not going to have anything there. It's going to fail um, somewhere in here. It's going to fail right here, and you know we don't have it set up down there. So we need to fail the actual task, and uh, if that happens, so just go ahead and drag this now. Actually, let's just go ahead and click in a reroute node right there. 
and then just plug that into the reroute node like so. Okay, so that's pretty much it for that. So yeah, switch that up. If it's Office, then we'll run this task. If it's not none selected, then we just zip straight through and it'll automatically do the rest of the chores for us. If it is Office, then we'll run all this, set our place of employment right there, and uh, which ultimately sets our, you know what, that's not gonna work. Yeah, so that's the other thing we need to do right here. Um, let's go ahead and give us a little bit more room again. Yeah, so now we need to grab our target location. Let's get it, pull off of this, and we'll set blackboard value as vector, right? And we could probably, now that we've got this set up right here, we could probably get rid of this place of employment vector right there, delete the variable. We'll just take this and plug this straight in, plug in the execution, right, like that. Yeah, so simple as that, um, because right down here, um, so we can make this universal with the none selected. We have the target location is what's setting the vector for the AI move right there. So off of your set target location, go ahead and now plug that back into the uh, reroute node to get to the AI move too. And yeah, so that, that will complete it out for us. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, okay. I didn't even fix that. I, I still have the place of employment in my cheat sheet, so... Um, that's why I was a little confused right there. All right, so our move to location is fixed and is universal. So let's go ahead and we can close that one out, I believe. Let's jump out here, make sure everything is still set up like it's supposed to. Um, unemployment, so we want none is selected because we're getting the random location right there. Random weight. Okay, so now what we got to do here is at the end of this, we don't want to constantly cycle this, right? He needs to be able to check for a job. So let's go ahead and create a new task. Now, while we are trying to make things as universal as possible, it is going to be inevitable that we're going to have tasks that aren't going to be so flexible. So like this one in particular, go ahead and create a new task. Make sure it's a blueprint base. And let's go out, change its name, F2, T underscore, uh, NPC underscore check for job. Um, actually, not check for job. That's going to be a little bit misleading um, because job, we refer to job, or at least I refer to job to like the construction site. That is a job. Um, so let's change that. Check for employment. Yes. Words mean something. I heard Ian Shadden say that on a Twitch uh, the other day. And, uh, yeah, it, it is very much true. Words mean something. So when you're naming your anything, when you're naming anything in here, remember words mean something employment. That's what this is checking. It's checking for employment, not a job. Okay. So now let's jump into this. This is going to be a pretty simple one. Um, let's do an event, receive, execute AI. All right. So now jump out here. All right, and let's grab let's grab our um, reference cast. Just pick whatever which one yeah, I did. Move to location, Control C, come back in here, Control V. Just makes it so much easier than actually rewriting this code. And then hook this up, hook the pawn controller or the uh, controlled pawn into there. Double click that, right click pawn, and create var variable pawn. Perfect. Compile it and save it. Let's move back out of here and real quick, get rid of the underscore two, enter. And then what we need to do now is we need to grab the pawn, get it. Now, all the work we did in the previous episodes comes down to, well, this one function right here, check for job, right? Check for job. And I should probably, speaking of words mean something, I should probably go back and change the name of that uh, function right there to check for employment. And you know what? I'm going to right now. So I'm just going to jump into it right now. And under work, check for job. No, we want to uh, check for employment. So let's go ahead and change that. Check for 
employment and it should automatically update anything that has reference to this compile save it let's go ahead and close that back out we can close out the move to location and there we go check for employment all right perfect so that's all we need to do grab a finish execute right there and were we successful well it depends it comes out of here were we successful in finding a job or not cool so if we were successful in finding a job well then obviously this finish execute will succeed if we weren't it will fail and what does that mean well that means when we come back out here if we drop that task in here actually let's go ahead and um, rename the class defaults there we go node name uh, check for employment compile and save it come back out here drag off of your unemployment sequence and do t check for employment just like so so what that means is if this succeeds well then it will jump back up there's nothing afterwards otherwise the succeed would pretty much go back underneath here but um yeah if we fail it, then we come back up here and it checks this again. Are we still employed? Yeah. And it will continue to run this if we fail. If we succeed, it'll go back up to where it needs to be. Job type check because in there we change our occupation type. So succeeding, it'll jump back up here. Job check will take effect and it will set our occupation type and it will allow us in here into the construction worker primarily because that's all we have right now but any other job task we have in here um, it will check for that so and eventually too speaking of optimizing and all that originally when i was doing my behavior training a long time ago when i first really started getting into this um, i was doing it like how i thought you were supposed to really do it by creating several different behavior trees and switching to it um, but there really wasn't much help out there on it and I, I got a little confused and really um, the branches we have here that are going to run they're really not that big I mean the behavior tree I showed you guys what the behavior tree in my main project looks like several episodes ago and it looks really big and looks really overwhelming but so far most of the branches we have off of all these are relatively small so it's not like you're running the whole thing and, it, and it's super complex but um, a lot of this probably should be put into separate behavior trees so at some point down the road we may come back and optimize that and run separate behavior trees um, for everything for like all the different jobs that will run that behavior tree for your unemployment and yeah so we'll probably set that up down the road so um, let's go ahead now and let's jump on to our construction section right here all right, so we got to change quite a, a few things into this. So let's go ahead and give us a little bit of room here. And this assign work construction. So what we need to do first, we need to check if we're even at the office because we don't want the um, think of it as well you're reporting to shift to work every day. Now, if you're a construction worker or anything like that, if you've done anything like that, um, not always do you have to go to the home base or the headquarters or whatever and get your your uh, job assignment. Um, but typically, and, and the way I'm going to set this up is the NPC has to be at the office because let's say they go to bed and go to sleep and and uh, because they got tired, but somebody else went and completed that job. Um, I, I'm logically I'm just going to have them go back to the construction office and check to see if there is a job still or new job the old job whatever the new job is they're going to go there they're going to get like um, think of it like a work order they're going to go there get the work order and then the construction office will ultimately ship them out so we don't want them assigning a job unless they're actually at the construction office okay so let's go ahead and pull off of this right here let's add a new sequence okay and we need some decorators in here so I don't think we have this decorator yet. Um, D does location exist? Nope, that's the only decorator we have. So let's go ahead and create a new decorator. Um, blueprint, ba blueprint base. Let's go back out here and let's call this, where is it right here? F2, let's go ahead, 
because location okay d underscore is at location yeah sorry about that I, I had to think real quick what that location exists was so let's go ahead and jump into here now okay and like we have for here let's go ahead and control c come out here control v will drop that in there real quick grab a actually for a decorator remember we got to come up here to the override in the functions we need to override perform condition check ai right so and i just messed that one up so let's go back out here to the event graph real quick grab this control x come into here now control v there we go and it really redeemed it for us get rid of all those underscores and twos hook this up and then hook your pawn up to this like we do in the past right click create new variable all right so what we got to do with this one well this is going to be at least kind of easy right at this point but to make it flexible remember we're trying to keep everything flexible let's create a new variable and we will call this one uh, location check and it will be um, we're just going to run the occupation type enum, right? Do we really want to name that location check? Um, yeah, because this is called is at location. So uh, we'll just leave the name of it. Location check it might be a little bit misleading, but um, yeah, we'll just leave it like that. So go ahead and pull this out. And some of this may end up as we move f further down the road, some of these may things may end up ch needing to change. Uh, we'll worry about that later. So run a switch on occupation type enum. Let's go ahead and hook this up. All right. So if we are unemployed right now, like, you know, as you know, we've only got two in there, which is unemployment construction. Well, we don't want to do anything on unemployment because we're not going to check a location unemployment. And that's not a location, right? So, um, right there, unemployment construction, and let's go ahead and run off of the construction. And what we need to do is grab the pawn, get it out here, get prof profile, get my profile. All right, let's just go ahead now and split the struct pin okay we need to create a new variable here because we're going to have to pull off of here the place of employment and we need to match it with our current location we need to make it of type blackboard key selector make sure it's editable make sure your location check is also editable all right so now grab our current location let's get it pull off of this and do get blackboard value as object right there remember we set this whenever we get to a location the current location is set assuming we're at a physical location it doesn't get set when we're wandering the world randomly when we're unemployed um, but it does set it everywhere else okay so now we need to we're checking are we at the location that's what this is doing is are we at a location well we're running off the construction so we need to make sure that our current location is equal to equal equal our place of employment okay and we don't need to run a branch off of this and I could probably go back and fix a lot of my other code because I'm bad at remembering to do this but all we need to do right here is click that did we succeed or not this will pass true or false well if these match up that's what we want to know true or false are those the same All right we're just going to get the note right here telling us we have no execution path right there so not a big deal the notes are not a big deal they're just warning you saying hey you might have something messed up All right so i'm just going to run a quick comment here we'll call this um office because we're checking ultimately are we at the office okay so compile and save that let's jump back into the behavior tree really quick so now the sequence node we need to drop that new decorator into here so right click it add decorator d is at location okay so now select that we need to check uh, location check construction right that's what we need to check is that so you know what let's go ahead back and i forgot let's let's do this real quick 
let's take this enum type out. Let's change this location check real quick. And uh, I forgot, we do have this location type enum. Yes, change variable type. We'll switch off of that. Switch on location type. Get out of here. There we go. We got none selected, home, office, and a restaurant. Just grab off the office, plug it in there, just like so. So yeah, let's do it like that. Much better. I forgot we had that location type enum. Um, even though I'm looking at my cheat sheet. A lot of good that does me, right? All right, cool. Compile it and save. We're going to get that note again because none of those execution pens are hooked up. And uh, let's jump back out here to the behavior tree. Change that for us. So let's go to office, right? Because we're checking office. And we'll name this is not at office. Because we only want to run this branch if we're actually not at our office. So in other words, for that to work, we're returning true if the current location which we need to set right there, is equal to our place of employment. So um, if it passes true, it'll execute this branch. We don't want that. So we want an inverse condition. This will mean if it comes out false. So that's why we named is not at office. It checks the inverse. So we only want to come down and execute this if we're not at the office. Okay, so we'll drag off this one, do a simple parallel. All right, and we did... A simple parallel right here so I'm not going to go through and explain all that um, what it does so what we need to do though is now we need to grab our move to location make sure target location is target location destination destination current location is current location and our location type will be office Just remember we set this up down here so if we run off of office, it's going to go and it's going to set all this to us because we're moving. So we want to move to our office, right? So that's what we set up there. Okay. So then all we need to do now is just go ahead and grab this control C and control C. I hate that. How it drops it. And then you think you didn't do it right. So then it drops too because you press it twice. All right. Drag it off of this simple parallel right there. So that way we make sure everything stays consistent. So it'll stop movement if we destroy our, you know, construction office. All right. Perfect. So that's all we got to do for that one. Um, what we, uh, we still need to add some more decorators here though. So we also need to check we, because it's going to continue. Remember, this is continually ticking the entire time, right? So He's not going to be at the office if he's out working, right? Well, we don't want him to come back to the office if he's actually out working and doing what he needs to do. So what we need to do is we need to add another decorator here. Select, right-click on the sequence, add another decorator, and this one will be a Blackboard selector. Okay, let's go ahead and rename this one and do is not busy. Remember, words mean something. So we only want to execute this if... He is not busy. So what we need to do here is come over here, select is busy, and we need to make this so it is not set. So we only want to execute if we're not at the office and if we are not busy. Okay, so now we run into another problem here, though. This is a new new decorator we're going to have to do. Is Let's say that we're not at the office and we're not busy, it'll come through and do this, okay? But let's say we're not at the office, but we are busy. We're busy doing our construction, right? This is gonna fail out, which means it's gonna come up here and try to run the next branch of the sequence. Well, we're not gonna run the next branch of the sequence. Um, you'll see in a minute, because we're gonna run another one of these of being is at office, and that's gonna be the other branch of this. It's gonna be the inverse of this. So if we are at the office, it'll assign a task. So those are pretty much gonna be the two choices we have in here. So if this fails out, we won't ever execute this other half. So what we need to do is right click. Um, hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense in just a little bit once we lay out this other side, but do a force success decorator. So it will always, this will always succeed. Even if one of these fail out, it'll force success, which means it won't run this, but 
it'll pass on to this sequence node right here saying, okay, well, we passed. So don't get hung up right here because otherwise it'd get hung up right here. So, and then it'll go through and branch on to the next one. So like I said, hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense here in a minute. All right. And I'm going to move this random weight to the middle. All right. And I'm going to change this. I'm going to, I am going to move this down to a two second weight. Okay. So we're just going to drop the weight in between right there. So now what we need to do, we need to run another sequence off of the construction. I'm pointing at my screen like, you're in this, like you can see it. I hate it when I do that. Yeah. So run your sequence off of there. Okay. And right click on that. Add decorator and do D is at location, right? It's just going to be the inverse of what we did is not at office. Let's change its node name to is at office. Current location needs to go to current location. Location check is office. So there we go. We don't want to inverse this one. Leave that one regular. We just want to know, are we at the office? If we are, then cool. Now we need to assign some work. So now we could drag this back down here, change the execution pins from this sequence from that one up there. All right. And then now we need to take this sequence and we need to plug it into the simple parallel right here and take the sequence and hook it up right there. All right. So this is ultimately how it's going to be laid out right in here for now. Um, I'm looking at the time and I'm looking at the work we've got left to do. And I don't think we're going to have enough time. So you know what? In the next episode, we're not going to be able to test this. What we're going to end up having to do, and I, I'm going to, I don't know, a lot of, I, I don't know. All right. So ultimately, this is what it's going to look like. Um, as far as it's going to laid out, um, again, it's going to come in here into, if we are a construction worker, it's going to come in here. If we're not current, not currently at our office, at our place of employment, um, then, it, and we're not busy, it's going to come into here and we're going to move to the office. All right. So that's what that section does. Then we're going to wait. Then we're going to come over here. Are we at the office? Well, yeah. Okay. Well, assign some work, uh, move to the destination, which is work. And once we get there. We want to report to shift. This is ultimately the same thing that we've had that would work. We could probably actually run it and, well, we still won't get anything because, well, there's no place of employment, right? Because the problem is, is if we just drop them in here into the world, um, there's no construction office. Well, he can't construct a construction office because he's not a construction worker, right? So we're going to have to create in the level blueprint. And this is what I was hoping to do the next episode. Um, but I'm looking at it and I don't think we're going to get to it in the next episode is, um, that way we can just take the blueprint, drop it in the world, wherever we want as a already constructed office, have the level blueprint know, Oh, Hey, let's add this to the places of um, employment in the game state. So the game state would know, Hey, I've got this place and it needs employees. And then he'll go, oh, okay, cool. I need a job and let's go in there. And, and, uh, yeah, that'll make more sense. I think hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I didn't confuse you with that, but we need a place pre-existing in the world for him to work, which in this case would be just a construction office. So we need it pre-existing in the world. If we just drag one in there now, it, it won't do anything because it still won't see it. Cause remember we set everything in the game state to know what type of employment it is, um, or, you know, set it as a place of employment. So we'll have to set up that functionality. And like I said, I was hoping to do that the next episode, but yeah, I waste a lot of time talking. <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, we're going to end up having to run this branch in the next episode. Um, we'll set up this assigned worker. We're going to have to change this up um, quite a bit. Let me open this up and it should be relatively easy. We're going to, like we did earlier, we're going to run a switch in here. Um, so if we're, you know, uh, at the office or whatever, right? Depending on the type of job you have, this actually wouldn't be the location search. This would actually be like the um, occupation type. So if you're a construction worker, then we need to run this branch. If we're, you know, a restaurant staff worker, then we need to run that branch. If you're a mill worker, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So, cause all this is going to have to go. We don't need, we don't need this in here anymore because we've got the other functionality set up elsewhere. So we'll have to set that up um, 
in well the next episode so sorry again i don't know why i always apologize this is this is very complicated stuff and i'm trying not to rush through this and but i do apologize because i know you know everybody wants their cake and wants to eat it too and, and uh, just you know sometimes things just don't go that way and uh, especially when it comes to the behavior tree but we'll, we'll get there i swear we're gonna get there um, so probably a couple more episodes though till we can actually test it. I thought we were going to move along a little bit further today than we did. Um, but, you know, that's the way it goes. I, I'm just trying to do the best I can to explain. If you did learn something, if you did enjoy this video, please do me a favor. Go down and hit that like button. It helps me out a ton. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. And uh, check out one of the other videos that are playing on the screen right now. If you want, go ahead and follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Um, I won't spam your feeds. I just keep you updated with a few things every now and then. So until next time, peace.